Her name was Cammie. Well, actually, I assume it still is. She lived four doors down from me in a brick house with her mother and father. An only child. I don't know how I met her. I think our mothers were friends from a former time and felt it would be wonderful if we played together. I was twelve. She was eleven. We had nothing in common. But once a week I walked down to her home and for an hour or so we did our best to strike up some sort of friendship. On May 8, 1964, I made the same journey, but this time, Cammy had a much more enthusiastic plan for our afternoon. It may have been initiated by her mother leaving us alone as she went out to the local IGA to purchase sweets and treats. Shortly after the departure of the maternal force, Cammy took me by the hand and led me to the front yard, where there were two pine trees growing by the bay windows, huge trees which had practically grown together to form one massive organism. Pushing past the branches, she pulled me into the enclosure, completely secluded from the outside world. She lay on her side on the bed of needles and patted a space next to her for me to join. I, I know it sounds silly, but I had no idea what was happening. Or maybe I did somewhere deep in my being, because I did not hesitate to comply. As soon as I reclined, she leaned over and kissed me on the lips. I wanted to run, but of course didn't. She did it again and again. Well, for the sake of brevity, it was seven times. In the midst of this onslaught of smooches, I noticed that my southern hemisphere suddenly came alive. My, well, my Australia pointed northwards to Indonesia. My longitude expanded without me giving latitude. I had lost control. Honest to God, at that point, I wanted my Aussie to go back to looking on New Zealand. I was terrified. On the other hand, Cammie was curious. She came even closer, slowly reaching her hand towards my emerging continent. And then, BAM! A brief eruption. Horrified, mortified, and delighted all at the same time. I stumbled to my feet, hobbled a few paces, burst through the branches, and ran all the way home the best I could. I avoided seeing Cammy for the next three weeks. It became a religious exercise, complete with my own form of repentance. When I finally asked my mother about the family, she explained that the reason I wasn't going down to see Cammy was that her mother and father had taken a position in Lima, Peru, and they had moved. I can't explain the combination of relief and disappointment that flooded my being. Time passed. Two years later, Cammie returned to our town. She enrolled in our school. I had grown. <laughs> Cammie, on the other hand, had grown more attractive. We never connected again. I shall never forget her. She is why I still smile when I see a kangaroo, and I giggle when I hear the word eucalyptus.